thanks for, thanks for joining us here. I'm, feel free to come and fill in the front seats. We're, um, I'm going to talk today. My, I'm going to talk today a little bit about um, the leather and um, leather um, lifestyle indexes and lifestyle assessments. So um, before we get started, just making sure all the technology is working. You can hear me fine. Video is okay. Tutto bene con il video. Okay. Um, thanks again for joining us. Uh, let me make sure I have uh, technology here. So, my name's Kevin Latner. I'm representing the uh, Leather and Hide Council of America. I'm also representing uh, the partners that we have in the um, market research and, and life cycle inventory and assessment that we're doing. We have a growing number of partners and, and look forward to continuing to cooperate. Leather right now is in the middle of a um, political storm. There's considerations for econo the economic impact, the environmental impact, the social impact of, of leather production. There's a lot of upstream criticism from uh, NGOs, from uh, consumers and, and brands and retailers have particular requirements on their production supply chain. But leather is really, it's proven, it's proven to be a byproduct. It's a byproduct of the meat, uh, the meat industry. But in order to demonstrate that, we really need to build uh, infrastructure of data that shows uh, how leather is in fact a sustainable alternative. There in fact is a lot of data out there and we need to pull that together. If you look around this show, you can see what a great product leather is. It's incredible material and uh, produces incredible products. And I'm not going to spend your time talking about what a great industry we have. Today I'd like to talk about what keeps me up at night. Leather is being branded, it's being labeled by some as the number one reason for global warming. And we need a science-based response to that. So I'm gonna talk about that over the next few minutes. Most of us here in the, in the, in the room are gonna represent uh, and work in hides and, or leather. Or, or leather. Some of us are going to be working in the chemical industry, maybe fasteners, zippers, but we don't represent the cattle industry. We don't represent the corn and soybean industry and, and, the, and the lands on which the cattle graze. But to those who demonize leather, that really doesn't matter. They condemn leather because of the carbon used in the feed because of uh, the, um, the chemicals used. And never mind that leather is a byproduct of the meat industry that has been around for thousands of years. Never mind that leather is a, the carbon emission is part of the biogenic carbon cycle. Or that um, leather is biodegradable. We know in today's world, social media conversation is really where the narrative starts. And so we wanted to be able to build a database framework to be able to communicate in that space. So as we develop a byproduct of leather, um, instead of leather, people are using products that uh, produce Produce all this um, clothing, 144 billion pieces of clothing, 60% of which are, are based on, on synthetics, where we are extracting products from the, the oil and, and, um, and chemicals that are, are uh, not sustainable. Companies preaching sustainability design optimization into their products. Materials in this index justify the use of these products while we squander resources like the leather, like the leather, um, like the sustainable leather products. So uh, the Hague index, for example, which is evaluating, is a materials index. 
value, finds that leather is 400, 400 times, uh, that, that leather substitutes are 400 times more sustainable than, uh, than uh, leather. One of the government materials indexes that I looked at finds that this phone is more sustainable than uh, my, the, the beef steak that I had last night. It defies logic. It also flies in the face of reality. So we really have an opportunity to reset. We are in a place where there's an awakening. Norwegian authorities have warned fashion leader H&M uh, that the Hig Index can't be used. It's illegal to use it on, uh, uh, as part of their advertising. In, uh, in the Netherlands, the Dutch industry has criticized and asked H&M uh, to stop using their sustainability collection because of a lack of underlying data. This is increasingly, we're seeing uh, a, if you will, a backlash, a consideration that uh, we can't just call things sustainable and expect people to believe uh, uh, without having the underlying data. People want information. And even if the, hind whether or not the HIG index uh, implodes, consumers, brands, and retailers, they want answers. And we need to be prepared as the leather industry to be able to give them answers. We need to provide hard, credible data highlighting the best practices in leather so that consumers, brands, and retailers can know uh, that the environmental footprint uh, of leather is really sustainable. And I'd like to shout out to some of this work that's being, gone in the in, uh, being done in the industry, in particular, uh, Spin360 is working uh, well in the, in the tanning industry to be able to put together what's happening uh, in the uh, data with what's happening in the tanning industry so that we can sh demonstrate that in fact leather is a s sustainable pr product. But like it or not, we're on the front line of the cattle industry. The environmental footprints of these industries uh, are allocated to hides and leather. And we, but we know, for example, in the United States that hide is one or two percent of uh, the value of of the animal and animal production dis decisions depend on the meat industry. That means that as the leather and fashion industry, we can't really tell them what to do, but we can work in partnership with them. And we know that in the US and, and, uh, and uh, in other countries as well, the industry already uses best practices for production and animal care. So we continue, and they continue to drive down carbon emissions. So part of what we need to do is make sure that we communicate to consumers, brands, and retailers that leather is a sustainable alternative. This is not, not only important for the, the meat industry, but it's actually an existential um, question that we need to address. The meat sector will survive without leather. The leather sector absolutely needs to be able to contribute this data. So in building the case, if we're going to have a materials index, we need to ensure that it's transparent, it's trusted, and, and that it can withstand scrutiny. What that means is that we need an in index that's peer-reviewed, open source, and continually updated. We cannot be held captive to one company um, or one organization that does not share its data or requires a pay-to-play system. We need to compare equivalent products. Durability is not the same. Um, if durability is not the same, then the products are not the same. Uh, leather is, uh, in, by some measures, five times as durable as some of the leather alternatives. How does that factor into sustainability index? We need to include equivalent cradle to grave uh, metrics. If leather is farm to, to, to material, then synthetic should be evaluated based on um, the exploration uh, and where it happens. Is it happening in the North Sea? Is it happening in Russia? All the way through to the material. 
And that doesn't touch on the question of disposal and what is the biodegradability of the, of the product. We, have, we already have the most, some of the most transparent systems in terms of evaluating sustainability. We need to now bring the data together and make sure that that's available to consumers. We're working with a variety of partners to create a life, a, uh, uh, an inventory of life cycle uh, data and a life cycle uh, assessment that spans product from, from, from uh, farm to product and through to use and biodegradability. Our partners, universities, research institutes, farmers, ranchers, packers, tanners, environmental justice organizations, including the North American Meat Institute, the World Wildlife Federation, and the Leather Working Group, have come together to develop a system to collect, hold, update, share information so that we can provide answers that consumers, brands, and retailers want. So we'll not be reinventing uh, the wheel here. We'll be collecting information and that mostly exists and then tying it together. In the, short, in the short term, we can pull together an inventory of data that is already out there. We are partnering with life cycle assessment leaders in the cattle industry to build uh, a partnership uh, that includes data from cattle and hides all the way through the supply chain. In the long term, we know that's not enough. On the farm, we know that we're only at the beginning of the story. Whether it's carbon, water, feed, and so on, we have to consider all of these things. There is a difference between rainwater, well water, gray water, and river water. Cattle finished in the U.S. spend two-thirds of their time on pasture, but there is a difference between pasture-fed animals and um, feed-finished animals. 80 to 90 percent of what cattle eat is not fit for human consumption, and 60 percent of agricultural land is marginal, not able to support food for human consumption. Carbon sequestration is often not calculated in the methane emission um, assessments that are made on cattle. While leather is renewable and petroleum products, petroleum-based synthetics are extractive, we are still not comparing, we still need to compare apples to apples. On the consumer side, we need to be looking at the difference in use. Leather is an incredibly durable and biodegradable uh, product. Um, Runners might take, um, might use a million steps before they're uh, ex used up, whereas leather, leather shoes might go five million steps. I'm wearing leather shoes today that I bought in Italy in 1997. I still use them um, and uh, have resold them more times than I can remember. Leather couches are significantly more durable than their s synthetic counterparts and jackets, shirts, and bags are passed on to children or sold into secondhand uh, environment instead of going into landfill. Closing the loop on biodegradability, we need to look at the circularity of the leather supply. Leather has been around since prehistory, and technogenic carbon is a product of discovery of oil and gas and has a single trajectory from extraction to the atmosphere, principally, in response to, principally responsible for, for climate change. To support leather and address our climate challenges, we really need to develop a data inventory from raw materials production through manufacturing distribution, use, disposal, uh, and recycling. And we'll start out with U.S. hides and our downstream partners, but look to expand to other uh, animal origins and different, uh, different product categories. We really think this is urgent. We're already seeing uh, in, the, in the EU that farmers are under threat uh, with requirements that they uh, stop producing uh, animals um, as a solution to uh, carbon, um, as a solution to global warming. So let me summarize, finish up, that we're excited about how we're pulling together the industry, how we're working with uh, both the 
beginning of the supply chain from the animal sector all the way down through uh, consumer use and uh, biodegradability. Our ambition is to come up with a standard that will work for the industry, but also work for consumers, brands, and retailers because it's transparent, because it's reliable, because it's something that has been independently reviewed and can withstand the scrutiny of, uh, the, of, of governments, of NGOs, uh, of you know, consumers. We're looking forward to working uh, together so that we can protect the industry that we work in and protect the planet that we love. Looking forward to working with the industry, with uh, those of you out there who would like to contact me to participate. Uh, my contact information is out here. Uh, I'm open for questions if there's questions. Um, and uh, thanks again for taking the time to visit. Initial companions to start this uh, more the automotive, the fashion. How do you see this type of uh, standards to be more likely adopted? Great. Thank you for the thank you for the question. So uh, one question is what's the time frame, um, and the other is uh, what are the sectors, uh, product sectors that we'll be looking at. Uh, in terms of time frame, the first phase, which I mentioned, is really just pulling to, uh, together the the data that exists out there and, and providing. Um, uh, an initial uh, assessment. We hope to be able to complete that by uh, the beginning to middle of next year. Uh, the long-term effort is really about continue providing a platform for continual improvement and continual feedback uh, in terms of what's happening out there. We'll initially do um, a supply chain that starts from uh, farm to uh, fashion, if you will, uh, that and that we expect that could take uh, somewhere between 12 to 18 months uh, beyond that. And that would just be for the United States in terms of uh, the, um, the animal input. And we would begin looking at probably to uh, a select group of um, products uh, and use those as the, uh, if you will, functional unit. So that uh, when we think about um, uh, life cycle assessments, it's based on some sort of functional unit. So we might start with a leather jacket, a pair of shoes or a pair of boots, uh, a leather bag, and maybe a um, couch or a leather chair, and then maybe, maybe uh, some uh, portion of uh, an automobile product. So the, those would be the functional units. We would try to cover uh, the breadth of uh, space where leather is used. Um, and that would give us a sense of, well, what is the footprint of this particular product to perhaps the cut? Uh, and then we would be able to add manufacturing. We would be able to then look from the consumer perspective using perhaps a wardrobe, um, a wardrobe analysis where we're looking at what's in consumer uh, wardrobes, how much of it comes from, um, from purchasing, how much it came from... Uh, uh, heritage, how much is bought at secondhand uh, stores, and again, what are they planning on doing when they when they finish a, with a leather jacket? Doesn't usually get thrown out. It usually gets goes to uh, a family member, a friend, or is sold. So that would be uh, that process. We would expect to be ongoing. So we would continue working on this on a um, sort of real time basis. Could take. Uh, to kind of flesh it all out could take three, five years. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none. Thank you. Uh, I am excited to be able to share what we're doing here, and I really appreciate your uh, joining us for, for visiting with us uh, during this conversation. Thanks again. Thank you.